Dear students, today we look at the bookkeeping consequences of so-called value-added taxes. As you already know, when you go to a supermarket or to another store, you buy something, you pay value-added taxes. So you pay basically the net amount plus the value-added tax rate. And in Germany, we have uh, sales taxes or value-added taxes. They have to be paid for all domestic sales, imports and internal consumption, so not for exports. And the sales tax rates are currently 0% for some products like in the educational sector or 7% generally for food or 19% for most products, for example, um, if, if you buy whatever, a new computer. Um, so exports are exempt from sales tax, so there basically the customers only pay the net amount. Just to make it easier and you can calculate in your head, for the following examples we calculate with a sales tax rate of 10%. If we look now at the different perspectives of the seller and the buyer, the normal case is the domestic sales and enterprise which is allowed to deduct value-added tax on inputs. That means if I buy something, I pay this to the seller, but then I will get it refunded from the financial authorities if I'm not the final consumer, a private consumer of that product. So the seller basically charges the sales tax to the buyer on goods sold as value-added taxes, and I pay this to the seller. And then the seller, of course, he owes the value-added tax, the received sales tax, to the financial, to the tax authority. And the seller offsets her or his tax debts against the tax receivables from uh, products which a seller bought her or himself from the purchase of goods for which she paid value-added taxes. Um, then, on the side of the buyer, First, the buyer pays the value-added taxes on goods purchased from the seller. But if I'm a commercial buyer, I acquire a claim for refunding taxes for the amount of the paid value-added tax for inputs if the buyer does not consume the paid goods for private purposes. So even if I'm an entrepreneur, um, if I consume something for private purposes, I still have to pay it. And then the buyer offsets the claims for tax to be refunded against tax debts to be paid to the tax authority. So this is just the overall structure we look at. And now we go for the bookkeeping consequences. And here we use a simple example, a little bit old-fashioned example. So we sell produced music records, but it's not that old-fashioned because they become actually more fashionable again by really enthusiast for music. So the book value of these uh, music records is 50 euros or monetary units on credit for 110 euros and this includes already the value added tax of 10% so it's 100 the net price plus the value added tax. And the seller pays freight to the logistics company of 5.5 euros it also includes already the taxes. So now we have to look at the revenues and the expense book records and then finally of course we have to pay the tax authority. So if we look at the revenue book record we sell our music records for 110 euro but only 100 euro are basically revenues because 10 euros this is a value-added tax I owe to the tax authority. Let's go look at the expense booking. Because on the expense side, first of all, I lose the value of the music records which I sell. This is 50 euro. And I have to pay 5 euros to the logistics company. So this is also an expense. At the same time, because I pay the logistics company 5.5 euro, I basically 
have a receivable, so that means the financial authority owes me to pay me this 0 0.5 euro back. This is 5 plus 10 percent, 0 0.5. And then my current assets go down because the music records are not there anymore, so I book this on the credit side, current, two current assets, music record 50 and accounts payable, what I have to pay to the logistics firm, 5.5 euro. And of course it's very important, like with all book records, we see we have 50.5 here on this side and 50.5 here on the left side of our book record. And at the end I have to pay the financial authority. And the financial authority would get 9.5 because we have value added taxes on our music record of 10 euro minus 0 0.5 which we paid to the logistics company and this is an overall difference of 9.5 and when we pay this amount of money we have an account payable to the financial authority of 9.5 and when we pay it then our cash is reduced to cash 9.5. So these are the book records uh, related to value added taxes. And just thinking a little bit about the situation here, because when we look, usually we have um, the share of 10%, which we assumed here, but in Germany most, with most products of 19%. If I want to calculate the gross price, I calculate the net price times 100 plus a value added tax rate divided by 100 and which kind of boils down for most products to a net price, let's say the net price is 100 times 100 plus 19 divided by 100, this is 119. And if we want to calculate the net price, it's just the opposite direction. When we know we have a gross price of 119, we divide it by 100 plus the tax rate divided by 100. So divided by 1.19 and then of course we have again the original net price. So after posting occurring changes of values of the goods through price changes, return of goods, so that could also be like a discount I give for the customer after the customer achieves a given budget, the calculation basis of VAT changes, so I have to make adjustments if I give any discounts or have any changes in values of the goods um, to adjust for these changes. If we now look a little bit deeper into the structure, I would like to cover another example. And in this example, we have a gross price of 100 euro. And we want to know what is the share of the value added taxes in this gross price of 100. So what we basically do is we do the calculation we have just done. And we come to the result that the share of value added taxes is 15%. 0.97 euros. And just going a little bit further, we have here an entire value chain we are considering. And if we look at the value chain, and here we start with a value chain uh, where we have a supplier, and the supplier basically delivers products uh, with a gross price of 15 euros to the manufacturer. And then the value added tax share is 239, which is the effective value added tax uh, the supplier pays to the financial authority. Of course, the manufacturer, because he pays or she pays the supplier, gets this back from the financial authority. So that's basically a zero sum game here. The supplier pays it to the financial authority, the manufacturer gets it back. So the manufacturer, of course, increases the value of the product, increases it to 60 euro and pays, sells it for a gross price of 60 euro to the wholesale company. And there the share of value at the taxes is 9.58 euro. And this 9.58 euro is then 
what again the manufacturer pays the financial authority. That is of course what the wholesaler is refunded by the financial authority. But then um, the wholesaler sells it with a profit margin here to the retailer for 75 euro, which boils down to a value added tax of 11.97 euro. And the retailer then sells it to the final customer for 100 euro. And here we already know the share, it's 15.97 euro. So overall, this is all basically paid by the supplier. The manufacturer gets it back. The manufacturer pays value added taxes. The wholesaler gets it back and the wholesaler pays it to the retailer and the retailer gets it back. But the final customer basically pays these 15.97 euros. And now we can do the calculation here. We see what is really effective here is 2.39 euro plus seven. I just use a comma here instead of the point, but I, I pronounce it as a point, plus 7.19 plus 2.39 euro plus four. And if we do the calculation here, this boils down to 15.97, what the financial authorities gets as the effective value added tax of this product. And with this example, we conclude the video. Thank you very much for watching.